mean when we talk about you have to know His Majesty's Bible. This is why we release a book, preliminary, preliminary notes to His Imperial Majesty's Bible, in order to help ground ones in the real knowledge, so ones can recognize. You see, because what we're saying here to some may seem very um, controversial. Some say we might be even wrong in saying there's no such thing as a fake Bible. Yes, there is. This is a fake Amharic Bible. You understand? Because You see, because what's behind this is deception. They deceived us. They took the ISBN off of his Imperial Majesty Hila Selassie's Bible right here. They claimed that it was hardcover, too. And it's not His Majesty's Bible. And look, it's not hardcover either. You see what I'm saying? So this is the Bible that we're saying is a fake Bible. Because basically it's not an indigenous Ethiopian translation as His Majesty's Bible. Not this one. This is 1980. So see, uh, one of the kind of key signs you can do if you, if you have a Bible like this, and we're not saying throw it away or whatever like that, it, as you strengthen your heart, it can be very, very interesting reading and studying. And as one is able to read and study, we can give you many examples where you'll see within the text and the translation, it is an inferior translation by comparison to the original 1961 authorized Amharic Bible, the revised Amharic Bible of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So we have to ask ourselves, why are they doing this? Why are they trying to tell us that this Bible, by switching up the ISBN, is this Bible? Why are they doing that? Why are they trying to advertise this as hardcover, you understand, when it's clearly, you know, it's clearly softcover, you see? We can't do that with this book right here. You can tell we can't, we can't bend this book, but we can bend this book easily because it's softcover. So that's not willful and, and purposeful, both deception as well as suppression. This is why it's been so difficult for us to obtain as of, I would say, over the last year to two. It's becoming gradually more and more difficult until we've brought out almost everyone who's had some of his Matthew's Bible on hand. We've brought out, we've redistributed what we were able to. You understand now we have many brothers and sisters who are still requesting. Even though they're not, some of them not readers, Amharic readers, but because there is such an um, enthusiasm for His Majesty's Bible that some of the Pharisees and scribes are seeking to deceive the public, the Ethiopian Christian public, the, the Amharic speaking public. And many believe that this is somehow a better translation. And there are an overwhelming number of proofs. Some of them we hope to actually give in some of our lectures here, as well as in writing, to really show and demonstrate that this is a fake Bible. This is a fake Bible. Instead of, instead of telling us that this Bible right here was translated from English, translated from the Good News Bible. You see what I'm saying? This is one of the reasons why when we, get, when we get into this Bible, in the first opening pages of it, they say, really uh, should be, and here you can see they still use His Majesty's uh, Bible Society or the Ethiopia Metaf Kedusa Mahibar. They use the logo, but can you see right there where it says 1980? Can you see right there where it says 1980? Hope you can see right there where it says 1980, right there, where it says 1980. All right? This shows when this was done, 1980. Now, if we had the other one, we can actually show you the older one, and you can actually look at the ISBN, too, as well. You know, because one say that, hey, you're calling it fake, and you know, make your case. Well, we're going to prosecute this case. And we hope Jah wills and the Savior wills we can convict the guilty. You understand? Because it's, it's, it's awful. It's, 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 it's faithless. It's like Kahadi, Manafikan. You know, what they are doing right here. 
You understand? And how they're seeking to deceive, you know, deceive Ethiopians at home and abroad. Okay, so next page. That's that page right there. And here, this is this is the ISBN. You see the ISBN on it? You see the ISBN right there? All right. Okay, you, you can see the ISBN, right? Now, that's the ISBN they're using now, you know, which caught us when we ordered some of these Bibles, thinking that they had a stock of His Majesty's Bibles, and we sought to obtain them for our brothers and sisters and for the Mitmanon, for the Rastafari and the Chopiawian Mitmanon. Now, hold that thought in mind right there. Now, this is a this is an older version of it that that we got some years ago. You understand? Basically, you can see it's the same. It's the same book right there. You see what I mean? Okay, this is a 1980 version. So when we open it up, it basically says the same thing. 1980. Let's just show you. You put the line of Judah stamp there, as we have stamped most of the books from that time. So you can see right there it says 1982. But let's look at the ISBN. Let's take a little look at the ISBN. Now, the ISBN, and it's really the four last numbers, the three plus the one number that hangs apart that's really important. There, there used to be a 10-digit um, ISBN, and some of the more modern ones have 13 digits. So that's a little technicality right there, but it's those last those last um, four digits. Now, here you can see where it says 37, 372, and 8. And this must have been printed in 1995. You see right down there? Right over there, I think it says 372 and 8. Can you see that? 372 uh, and 8, right? 37. Two eight. Let's let's do it like this. All right. Let's do it like this. ISBN. All right. ISBN three seven two and eight. Right. And this is the one from nineteen ninety five. Right. Nineteen ninety five. See if you want, we can go back. I think we have a nineteen seventy seven of His Majesty's Bible. Can look at the ISBN there, but. Um, truthfully, the Bible was reprinted because of the many requests for His Majesty's Bible many times. Now, in His Majesty's Bible, or in His Majesty's, in the original um, Amharic, in the original M Amharic, uh, we have uh, we have 1961, right? Let's put this over here. 1961, this is what we're talking about, 1961, and the last ones right here was, it has three, or zero, zero three, let's go, zero, three, six, two, right? Before that, it has one, four, six, Six, right, and that was printed. It seems like this series of printing was 1999. So, so this is this is the original printing of the version 1991, and the last printings were roughly 1999, right? So put a little asterisk there. Just so this right here is the ISBN. This is H I M Bible, right? This is H I M, the original. This is the one we're speaking about right here, right? Now, this one is the, the new, rather fake, right? The fake Amharic, uh, Amharic Bible. This one right here, all right? You see? And this is the original Amharic. Let's call this one the pure Amharic. And we'll go into what we mean by pure. The pure Amharic one, this is the fake one. So you can see there's a difference in the numbers used right here. Now, let us take a look at the most recent 
the most recent uh, version that they advertised to us as being right now here's what's here's what's interesting they have a 13 13 digits they have 843043 843043 but yet let's put that up there too because here was in the book, but what's also being advertised now on on the on the so-called page. So let me have this one here. Let's put more of the full of number right here. They have uh, eight four three zero four three. Put a little asterisk right there. Put a little asterisk next to that right there. All right. But now, if you look at this right here, if you look at this right here, the item number, the item number right there, you see what the numbers are right there? All right. The item number right there says says four six six. The part right here, four six six. So this new one, which has this one, they are seeking to advertise it as His Imperial Majesty's Bible. So it's something that that ones need to, um, you know, uh, keep a lookout. Some have said, "Oh, I got I got the Amharic Bible." I said, "Which one?" They said, "The Amharic one," thinking that there's only one. I mean, there's only one true one. But there's more than one kind of version out there, so forth and so on. So I usually say, well, well, look in the first title page and give me and give me the date. You know what I mean? And it was, tell me what date. In other words, what date do they ascribe? And so the difference we have is the 1980, right, which is seeking to suppress the 19. 61 and the 61 right the 61 is H I M's version and the 1980 is Pope is the Pope quote end quote is the is, is the papal version and we, and we can we can actually prove that too because we said that this so-called new Bible this 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 Kalal um, um, uh, Makalal uh, Kalel uh, Makalel version, you know, saying when that means to say it's light, they try to say it's easy, but it's like light. It's almost like almost the point of being vain. You understand? We're not saying it's completely vain, but because it has God's word and, and Christ, it has Exiaria and Christos in it, and the other names of the holy and the righteous ones. But the context of it is not based on our indigenous ancient scriptures. Or even the Hebrew, they say that, well, this has been diligently compared with the Hebrew and the Greek, so therefore it is more accurate, blah, 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 blah. Who do they think they're talking to? They must be talking to some so-called, um, you know, ignorant Ethiopian or Amharic speakers there, ones who might not know Hebrew or ones who might not know the Koina, the Greek, or the Masoretic, or the Seretic, or even the Coptic, and can't, don't, don't even know the Goods. You see what I'm saying? See, His Majesty's Bible is based on the ancient Ethiopian text. The Goods, um, the, 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 the Greek and the Hebrew compared later on. Now, how do we know this? Well, we know this. Let's go to our preliminary notes for a moment. Where's the preliminary notes? We put it over here. Okay, the preliminary notes. And when we get to like the first part of the preliminary notes, what we uh, put in this is what His Imperial Majesty said, because we find that there's no better um, explainer of and and this this particular page was the Mechdem, right here, which is the foreword, right? The foreword. And in this foreword, translated, the English translation, here's what His Majesty says concerning his Bible or concerning the authorized Amharic Bible. You understand? Know the authorized. And see, 
in a sense, we can understand where some of the King James people, you know, people who say that they it's the King James Version of the Bible, when you really are able to understand the King James Version, what's behind it, do your Schofield, your Septuagint, um, your, your, what they call it, your Strong's Concordance, but get into your Gesenius Lexicon for the Old Testament, and your Thyla's Lexicon for the New Testament, you know, when you're really studying, when you really love the Word, that you study it. You understand? I mean, I mean, even even one line or sentence. Sometimes just studying what's in that one sentence and getting to the root words adds so much to your biblical and your spiritual awareness. It is truly awesome. You know, it's truly awesome. It's not like you have to study a whole book to begin with, but you can study just a couple of a, a couple of phrases, a couple of a, a, a words, a name in the scripture and when your awareness really begins to comprehend what the true meaning of it this is what we try to encourage our brothers and sisters in the Amharic literacy and of course they may hear me or other ones who are even more fluent speaking and 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 conversating and they feel like oh I can't get this start with baby steps so baby has to crawl first start with your ha who he's get the Amharic Bible homeschooling uh, updated uh, updated um, um, version of the booklet is coming out very, very soon. You understand? We hope we hope that's published within the next, we say, seven days, Subai, the next week or so. So please hope and pray with us. And if one seeks to even find out more about it, go to our website, www.lojsociety.org forward slash books, forward slash books to see what's new there. But His Majesty... You, you see, what's really offensive about this Good News Bible is not the fact that other Ethiopians or other people say, hey, let's just do another translation. And they did a translation. But because they're seeking to suppress His Majesty's Bible and to deceive people, because they know that more people are becoming more and more awake about it. You understand? More e Ethiopians even, regardless of what they may feel about His Majesty, so forth and so on, many honestly have admitted that the translation, I mean, and these are some people who really understand the language, understand the good is, so you're able to look at the older version and, and the good is and Abu Rumi's version, then you look at His Majesty's version, and then you look at the new version, the new version, which is this one right here, you know, which is basically this right here, the Good News Bible. Now, why do we say it's the 1980 Bible is the Papal Bible? Because this is what this Good News Bible is all about. You understand? Know the Good News Bible is basically the Papal approved Bible. It's all part of their so called New World Order. You understand? Know the whole ecumenical sort of thing going on. Because when you look through it, it was completed roughly around like 78. 78. And when you see who's behind this, it says, um, well, let me show you first right here. Let me show you right here. Here it goes right here. These, these folks right there. See those folks? All right. You get that title? You see that title? What's that title right there? That title says, um, it says, Imprimator. Imprimator. Sounds kind of like Latin or so. Well, if these if these so-called careless Ethiopians are being honest, they should have that in there as well. They are like, oh, we just decided to translate this new Bible and compare with Hebrew, and, and it reads just like the introduction here. But worse yet, when you get into the chapters and you really start to read the, the English and you understand English well enough and you understand Amharic well enough, it's, 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 not, it's not funny, it's not amusing. It's not amusing because what's being done to the faith of the people, you understand? There's even certain theological errors as well, you understand? Uh, we're going to show you hopefully some examples where, where they change gender too. They change gender. Something that's supposed to be a feminine gender, they make it masculine. Something that's masculine gender, they make it feminine. And then when you go back to the Hebrew, the Hebrew agrees with the Metzaf Kedus of his imperial majesty. The Hebrew agrees with his majesty's Bible. But yet, in their foreword, they make a big write-up about, oh, like, we checked this, we checked that. No, they're just repeating, they're mimicking 
You understand what the uh, mystery Babylon overlords are telling them. So we have John Francis Well, Wheel One. We have Arch Archbishop of Hartford. Then we have Censor Deputatus, the Reverend Kenneth H. Schreiner. You understand? Kenneth H. Schreiner. And they even have, in, in this, in this so-called Good News one, in this so-called Good News Bible, they have like, like an introduction before the chapters. You know, as a kind of a secondary or tertiary, uh, as a secondary or tertiary, like a second level or third level um, comparison or reference, there's nothing wrong with it on that sort of level. And that's what they intended to do because there's other them hard Bibles out there. And we won't try to call them in, in the same way fake. They're just a different kind of common or uh, vernacular translation for today's um, more ignoramus Ethiopians. You know what I'm But for those who really um, love their language and understand the importance of their culture and that Ethiopian or Ethiopic culture is high culture, it's just like if you want to go to some Western university over here and you want to study medicine or law, you got to learn Latin, you know, to really qualify for that higher level of, you could say, both honor and, and knowledge and responsibility and sociability, so forth and so on. Well, it's the same way in Ethiopia, in, in Ethiopia, in true Ethiopia, what we know or knew and will know again as imperial Ethiopia, when the crown is restored, the crown and the throne and the kingdom will be restored. But first, there's this spiritual warfare that we're engaged in right now. This is why speaking on this particular subject matter is very, very important. It's very, very important because there's, there's a spiritual war. You see what I'm saying? If they can control the way that you conceive, believe, or understand God, you understand? And this is what they've been doing in a lot of languages because they released this Good News Bible. And in a lot of Bible shops, people who go to Bible shops and pay attention to this sort of thing, you see in a lot of these Bible shops, they have a lot of these different Bibles in different in, 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 in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Spanish, um, and Creole, and all kind of different um, languages. But then if you study the books carefully, you'll recognize that basically the Good News Bible, this is just a, a very, um, it's, it's, like, it's like a black ops campaign of Mystery Babylon on a certain level. Yovas. And if they were just going to do that because they want to put out a new Bible, as we said, no problem. If you want to study this as a, as, a, as a linguistic exercise, you'll find it very interesting if you have a good groundation and foundation. But for them to want to destroy or suppress the real foundation, which is the Met of Caduce of Hala Selassie, you know, this means spiritual warfare. You understand? And this means that ones and ones who know the truth have to put out that message. So I know a lot of, there's a lot of Ethiopians out there, some who might agree with some of the things we say, might not agree with other things, but please, brothers and sisters, think about what we're saying right here and how important this is a part of our cultural and literary and, 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 and part of our divine heritage. We're talking about our divine heritage here. You understand? If somebody want to release another book, it's just a book. But want to release a book as though it's another book. That's deception right there. Want to give someone this in, in, in place of this. When they ask for this, they said, do you have this, we said? And they said, yes, we have this. Are you sure it's this? Well, check the ISBN. They say, well, this is the book we have. And it's hardcover, too. And we got this. And it's not hard to cover, and, and it's soft cover. It's the 1980 um, Good News Bible in Amharic, basically. It's the Good News Bible in Amharic. You know, and you Ethiopians out there, some of y'all might like this book. We'll give you a little something that might help you. Go get this book, the Good News Bible, if you want to learn English and stuff like that, and then read this, this 1980 Read the 1980 so-called Metaf Kedus alongside this Good News Bible, Yovas, and, and you probably will recognize what we're saying. And then tell me, well, 
where did it come from our roots and our truth? What do I mean by that? Let's listen to the King of Kings. Since you have, you have been like a, a, a serpent that, that stops up her ears so she doesn't hear, let's hear what his Matthew says about the Revised and Hard Bible. Right? Now, this is from July 23rd, 1961. July 23rd, 1960, 1961. And it says so even there in Amharic, right over there. You understand? It says so right there. Just to get the dating on it, the historicity of it. His Majesty says that Ethiopia, an island of Christianity, is recorded in history as having received first the Old Testament and then the New Testament earlier than most of the countries in the world. So, so let's, let's ask ourselves a question right here. We know Ethiopia is the first land or country or people that we know of even today in the Bible. We know that. You can just read the first couple of chapters in the Bible. Another thing about this, 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 this new Bible, um, the Good News Bible, they try to take out Ethiopia out of certain places, especially in the English. I think the Ethiopian careless one, they wrestled with them. Some place they kept it in. But what they try to do is put Sudan or something instead of Ethiopia. And that's a whole other kind of level right there. But let's ask ourselves a question. Did Ethiopia receive first the Old Testament in Solomon and, and, and Shabian times or Queen of Sheba times before Rome, before England, before Europa or Europe? Let's ask ourselves. So why are we accepting their rewrite, their perversion, you understand, and their theology subtly and subliminally in this 1980 Amharic Bible that we call basically a fake Amharic Bible? When you're going to try to pretend that it's His Majesty's 1961 Metz of Caduce, then we'll call it fake, because that's what it is, it's fake. You know what I'm saying? So be warned, brothers and sisters, there's the 1961, and then there's the 1980. This is how you can know. This is, how, this is one of the ways. You know, like they say, how are you going to know like a, 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 a counterfeit? How, how do they, they know the counterfeit? They have to look at the real thing. You understand the real thing? So many Ethiopians may accept this Elel uh, Bala Amarinya, you understand, Turgum. They may accept that because they don't know what their own authentic divine heritage is. You know, but then if they do know, and they still reject that, then woe, woe, you not show, woe to them. But here's as he goes on to say, when in Old Testament times she received the law. In other words, in Old Testament times, Ethiopia received Torah. You know what I'm saying? Received the Torah, the law. And when in New Testament times she received the Wengel, or the Gospel, of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Gitachina Met Hanatachin Jesus Christos. She ensured, Ethiopia ensured as a Christian, Judeo Christian nation, she ensured that the scriptures were translated into the ancient language of Gutas, into the ancient language of Ethiopic, known as the Gutas. From those times to this, various books, both of spiritual and material prophet, have periodically been compiled and written in goodness. We remember with deep gratitude those fathers of old who, as time and opportunity allowed, worked with much care and labor and have left us books for the preservation of the faith and for the increase in learning and knowledge. So see, this, when we talk about His Majesty's Bible, this is our own indigenous. You, you see, it's Ethiopian translators who worked under the authority and along with His Majesty at this labor and at this task, my brothers and sisters. And those of us who are able and have been studying the Masoretic and the Hebrew and the Septuagint and doing like the Strong's Concordance and getting into root words and diligent comparisons of word and word and verse and verse and paragraph and paragraph and chapter and chapter and book and book, we know what we're saying by this. You know what we're saying? These are things that we can back up with evidence. 
and in some cases we've actually tried to demonstrate it in other lectures exactly on certain particular points as examples because, you know, there, there is so much, you know, saying, in the truth. There's, there, there, there's eternal truth in the truth. You know, so just recognize that. But in former times, good is was the language of the country. And so even without an interpreter, the people had no difficulty in examining and understanding the books. But just as one age succeeds another, so Amharic, which sprang from Gutas, gradually grew until it became the common speech of the people, taking the place of Gutas. At that time, Gutas was understood by the learned people of the church. So when we're saying that some, by comparison, immature or less intelligent, therefore more ignorant Ethiopians would gladly accept what we call right here to be another gospel. This is basically another gospel. You understand? A fringe. This is a fringe gospel, and it's not even superior as a translation. And it's less accurate as a translation by examining and comparison. This 1980 Bible pretending on the internet and elsewhere to take the place of the 1961 Metzhaf Kedus or Haile Selassie's Bible, the Emperor's Bible, you understand, and, and, and the better translation. And this is why we love it. We can say it's the Emperor's Bible, Haile Selassie, the Book of the Seven Seals, you know, with passion and with joy and with love and even pride in the King of Kings and his Christ. But then we can prove it, too, when we open the pages. And, and we just go side by side. Let's go through this. But as Matsy goes on to say that at that time, at that time, Gutters was understood by the learned people of the church, but was not readily understood by the ordinary people. Arising from this, the scholars in their preaching and work have for centuries been forced in their teaching to interpret from Gutters from the Gutters into Amorinya or the Amharic. And these conditions prevail until our own times. You remember Revelation 5 5? You know, meet his majesty, mystified by five. Now when you when you understand that context of the prophetic word and then comprehend the true history of Ethiopia or the progress of the 1961 Emperor's Bible or Haile Selassie Bible, Revised Amharic Bible, then the significance of what his majesty is saying here and the fulfillment of prophecy becomes indubitably very, very clear. But let's just go on with this. So he says, since the time when, by God's grace, we were chosen to ascend the throne of Ethiopia, and while we have been leading our people to progress in learning and knowledge, we have labored in every way possible with an eye to their growth in spiritual and material learning and knowledge. In order to reach this goal and realizing that the first necessity was to have the scriptures translated into Amharic and printed in bulk, in 1918, when we were still heir to the throne and regent, we chose from amongst the scholars some to translate the scriptures and to produce the translation alongside the goods. That means side by side, as the society now is doing with, with our parallel Bibles, with the side by side with the Metaf Kedus of the King of Kings, on one side, and the King James Version, which happens to be, you know, since structurally speaking, the best and the more or most accurate in the English language. Something very amazing, because only, only two emperors in the whole world, kings or sovereign rulers, bothered to translate the Bible for their people. You know, saying, other than the King of Kings, Haile Selassie, 1961, and King James, quote unquote, and um, and uh, what was that? Uh, what was King James? 
1611, 1611, 1611. You could tell, but you know, I'm, I'm seeking to. to to, to, to be in our own in, in our own um drink from our own cistern. But sixteen sixteen eleven was King James and nineteen sixty one. Even in the numbers right there, you can see something either mystical, you understand, going on with the numbers, but the fact that only two sovereigns chose to do that for the average people. You know what I'm saying? And, and even though the King James, there was other versions, William Tyndall, so forth and so on before him. You know what I'm But in the King of Kings case, it perfectly fulfills Revelation 5 and 5. So the war against His Majesty's Bible by certain careless Ethiopians, publishers, translators, Bible booksellers, so forth and so on, is it, it, deeper than that. Because by going against his majesty's translation of the truth of Revelation 5 and 5 is going against God the Father and against the Lamb, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. So it's very significant. We hope that ones are doing these things ignorantly and they get wind of it. They will, they will repent. They will recant, you know, and repent. But let's go forward right here. So he says, in order to reach this goal and realizing that the first necessity was to have the scriptures translated into Amharic and printed in bulk. In 1918, when we were still heir to the throne and region, we chose from among the scholars some to translate the scriptures and to produce the translation alongside the Gutters. After this, too, at our private expense, we had a printing machine brought from Europe establish a printing press, the Burhanna. Salam, and began to have books printed. Education is the key. Some of the books which we caused to be printed into Gutters and Amharic at that time, read in churches and homes, have been found profitable to the establishment of faith and to spiritual strengthening. So see, we have to really understand the big picture. See, with this fake Bible... It causes fake faith, too. And it breaks down the real faith of the people as well as their spiritual strengthening. You, 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 you know the real significance of what this, uh, what this reasoning and lecture is really about and this warning is about? Now, let's go on. After that, noting that the people, that the mind of the people, the mind of the people continue to grow in understanding or overstanding, as we would say. We arrange for a word-for-word, word, a word-for-word word translation into Amharic of the books of the Old and New Testaments. Our scholars completed the translation and presented it to us in 1931. Now, there's, there's a whole prophetical level that's significant as well here. So just remember these dates in 1931. And we ordered its printing. While the book, Simu Simu, listen to this. While the book was still in the press, however, enemy aggression, enemy aggression in 1935 halted the work. Now what enemy aggression is he talking about? He's talking about fascist Italy and, and Benito Mussolini, that, that dragon, that enemy aggression which was being backed by who? Which was being blessed and backed by the Pope of Rome, by the Vatican, by Mystery Babylon. Now, when we get behind this Good News Bible right here, it's the same thing going on. They're taking this right here, and they are having some, had some Ethiopian translated in 1981, and now they're trying to take this and palm it off as though it is His Majesty's Bible, and it is not. Let's just show one that one didn't see the other one. One of these is the original. One of these is the real Amharic Bible. And one of these is a good news carbon copy and fake. Do you know which one it is? You see the one in my right hand? The one, the one in my right hand is the real Emperor's Bible, the Metaf Caduce, the book of the seven seals. And this one at the left is the Goat's Bible. You understand? It's, it's the papal Bible, the good news Bible. Basically, as we've been saying, it is the Amharic version of this right here. That's what it is. 
You see, that's what it is. If we were to show you, well, well, His Majesty's Bible, we have to show you the goodness. Because Majesty's giving us testimony right here. He's giving us testimony. So let's listen a little bit more. So while the book, which is actually the first Haile Selassie Bible, ones don't know, there was a first Haile Selassie Bible from 1931. So let's look at what was being done. Ethiopia received the Constitution. His Majesty is increasing printing and education. And when the enemy saw this of God's people, the enemy, just like Revelation says, you know what I'm saying? The enemy went to war against the remnant Yorubas of God's people. And that's where Revelation was fulfilled with those who were in, in the white robes. Go look at the historical footage in the film and you'll see that to be true. So right here, it says that the work was halted, but even so, while in exile in London, or London, we gave permission for this same Bible to be printed by photo offset, and it was duly issued. By this book, our Ethiopian subjects in exile in many countries held fast to their faith, to the 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 Ritua Hymenot, the Ritit Amin, to the true and the correct faith, and presented their petitions, their abetuta, to Almighty God, as they awaited the restoration of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia. So you see, or do you hear? Do you hear how significant it was? You know, it was that the people had their own Bible, you know, saying their own Bible from their ancient, from their vine, from their fig tree, from, from their testimony and giving it their relationship with the true God, you know, saying the God and Father, the creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas, and all that is therein. And through that covenant of King Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and just the, the ancient relationship that the true God has had with the righteous Ethiopians, the righteous Tobians. He even says in Amos 9 and 7, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? That's where we not get off, but that's where we come into the picture. Those of us, the so-called black people in the, in the Americas, in the Caribbean, the whole uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 68 experience, that we still are in the iniquity of the Amorites, period. That's what's happening right now. But the last paragraph, just to complete this, so now that was the first Haile Selassie Bible. That was the first Haile Selassie Bible. Now this, he's going to now speak about the revised, you see, and the reasons for the imperial revision. When all honor and praise be to God, we had brought about the liberation of Ethiopia and had entered our empire, realizing that there ought to be a revision from the original Hebrew and Greek of the existing translation of the Bible, we chose scholars qualified for the work of biblical training and on March 6, 1947, set up a Bible committee in our palace. The committee worked with diligence for some five years and on April 19, 1952, presented the translation to us. We gave heartfelt thanks to all who helped us in this work. All the ancient scriptures were written for our instruction in order that through the encouragement they give us, we may maintain our hope with fortitude because we desire that the light which comes from the scriptures may shine to all. This Bible, this Bible, you see this Bible? We're talking about this Bible. We're talking about the 1961, or in, in it, 62, because that's after this, he had it circulated through the International Bible Society. We're talking about the 60s Bible versus these latter-day, these latter-day ain'ts. These latter-day ain'ts. As Matt says, because we desire that the light which comes from the Scriptures may shine 
to all. This Bible, by our command and will, has been revised and printed in the 31st year of our reign. The line of Judah hath prevailed. His imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. So this is just a little note from the preliminary Rastafari preliminary notes on the Haile Selassie I Amharic Bible. You know, just giving one a, a, a basic introduction into the book in order to put the matters in their proper context so that one can examine and have an opportunity to examine the, the legitimate, as I said, the legitimate document the original, the authorized, the true document, so that one can then recognize the so-called fake. You understand? See, if you've never looked at, then we can know counterfeits by looking at the original. You need to look at the original. So when we understand his Matthew's process in bringing forth this particular Bible, the first step was from Goodness, side by side. Then have a revision with the, the Hebrew of the Old Testament, so-called Masoretic, along with the Septuagint of the New Testament. So what we have here is a highly refined and a purified document. Thus, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 to 7 and 9 to 10 is also true concerning the pure language. So when you look at the quality, when you compare the quality of the language, you see, some say, oh, it's too difficult, it's too hard, so forth and so on. No, it's not. You understand? It's just that ones have been miseducated, you understand, and not been educated in their own vine and fig tree and, and their, their own root, you understand, their own truth, the half of the story that hasn't been told to them until now. So, my brothers and sisters, that's just a, another note and an update concerning this matter of the met of of his imperial majesty so that ones will be able to distinguish, you understand, distinguish for themselves the, the, the real, the authentic document of the king of kings versus the so-called, I don't even say carbon copy, but the fake, basically, a Western Bible and Ethiopian face. This is not it. The, 19, the 1981 is, is, is not it, my brothers and sisters. It's not it. This is it. The Met of Caduce of the King of Kings and his Christ.